après un mois de chantier à Langkawi, Energy Observer est resté quelques semaines de plus en Malaisie pour faire ce qu'on fait le mieux, à savoir recevoir du monde à bord, parler d'énergie et aussi comprendre et aller découvrir ce pays, ses enjeux énergétiques et environnementaux. Retour sur la 74e escale d'Energy Observer en Malaisie. Après toutes ces visites, à bord, en visio, avec des écoles, des universitaires, la presse et même l'ambassade de France, il est temps pour nous d'aller à terre pour mieux comprendre les défis énergétiques de la Malaisie et ses objectifs pour le futur. Allez, c'est parti At the moment, in Malaysia, most of our energy mix come from fossil fuel in the form of coal, in essence. Almost 80% are actually from fossil. In Malaysia, we produce high quality oil. So when we produce high quality oil, we tend to export it. And we import lower quality oil for our own consumption in terms of fuel. Also, we have a very huge gas reserve that we have been exporting to other countries. When we do that, we have favorable trade in terms of the uh, economic uh, sense. So at the moment, if you consider hydro as a renewable source of energy, we have around almost 20% in hydro. So I think that's quite a good mix. Nevertheless, there are other contributions that are coming in in Malaysia today. Uh, the main one is actually in solar, for example. I mean, we have huge solar farm. There are more being planned. Our university, for example, is 100% dependent on solar. By 2025, 31% of our mix are supposed to come from renewables. Eventually, moving 2050, uh, we are going to have uh, zero carbon. Do you think that kind of goals are realistic? Um, personally, I don't think so. Government say one thing, industry do another thing. So both of them have to be heading towards the same goal. That is why I have the skepticism for now. I think fossil fuel is going to be there in a long time to come. On pouvait difficilement venir en Malaisie et ne pas parler d'huile de palme. C'est un sujet qu'on a envie de traiter depuis un petit moment maintenant avec Energy Observer depuis qu'on est en Asie du Sud-Est. Il faut comprendre que c'est un sujet aussi très très sensible, donc pas évident de trouver les interlocuteurs qui acceptent de nous parler. Ici, au sud-ouest de Kuala Lumpur, on a eu la chance de trouver une plantation qui a bien voulu nous ouvrir ses portes, alors on en a profité. L'huile de palme, vous la connaissez tous parce qu'on la retrouve dans beaucoup beaucoup de produits, dans les pâtisseries, dans les chocolats, dans nos cosmétiques. Ici en Malaisie, on considère que la moitié de ce qu'on peut trouver en supermarché contient de l'huile de palme. La Malaisie est le deuxième plus gros producteur et exportateur d'huile de palme au monde, juste après l'Indonésie. Le problème avec cette production, c'est son coût écologique et climatique plutôt important, ce qui lui vaut d'ailleurs sa mauvaise réputation à l'étranger. Mais les choses sont en train de changer et ici en Malaisie, comme dans d'autres pays d'Asie du Sud-Est, des standards sont mis en place pour se tourner vers une production d'huile de palme plus durable. Palm oil itself is a very versatile uh, vegetable oil. It's uh, produced from uh, oil palm trees like this. These trees would produce uh, fresh fruit branches. And these fresh fruit branches would then be harvested by our harvesters and then sent to a mill. Oils are then extracted uh, from these fruits then processed at refineries and then uh, converted into end products uh, for our customers. It is the most efficient uh, vegetable oil per hectare. Palm oil has a very big impact on biodiversity here in Malaysia and also in Asia. 
but we, we try to, to manage uh, palm oil as a sustainable palm oil uh, production here, here in Malaysia. So RSPO is a voluntary certification scheme that was founded by WWF and also a few other stakeholders. Palm oil producers can actually subscribe to certification and produce palm oil sustainably following their principles and criteria. So there are criteria on environmental protection, there are criteria on social improvements, also criteria on enhanced economic development as well. And that is very different from how uh, traditionally palm oil is, is produced as a, as a plantation here in Malaysia. Just take me at the outer layer. Mm. Don't worry, it's safe for human consumption. I've tried this many times already. So Saim Dabi Plantation, we have a no deforestation commitment. Previously, the approach has always been to expand our land, land banks. However, uh, that approach has now stopped. And the focus is to get as much oil as we can from our existing planted area. I think the important message is to understand that palm oil is not the enemy. So unsustainable palm oil is, is the issue. So how it's being produced, how it's being grown. So I think the major message here is to encourage the use and promotion of sustainable palm oil all over the world instead of not using palm oil or banning palm oil. I think that's the major message that I want to, to put forth. <laughs>